Bunny hopping is a technique that everyone wants to master, but some riders have a lot of trouble learning. If you're having trouble and feel hopeless, this tutorial is just for you. To bunny hop, you need to lift your front wheel off the ground, jump upwards, and push your bars forwards. To do this, you'll need to get your front wheel off the ground. So let's start there and talk about what could go wrong. First of all, if you're small, like me, you'll need a small bike. If you're big, you'll be okay on a big bike. This is important because you'll need plenty of space between you and the bike to pull up and transfer weight around. So make sure your bike's the right size for you. Second, bunny hops are much easier on a mountain bike with an aggressive slanted back geometry. By this, I mean that the top of your seat tube is lower than your bars. Dropping your saddle is an obvious way to achieve this geometry, but some bikes just aren't shaped right for this. In that case, you can get riser bars or a taller stem, which should help a little. For the most part, most newer mountain bikes have a pretty aggressive geometry, so unless your bike's really old, you're probably not going to have this problem. Third, you probably have front suspension and maybe even rear suspension. Because suspension is designed to absorb changes in the terrain, it will also absorb any movement you make on the bike, thereby dampening your efforts at a bunny hop. To counteract this, you need to preload. Preloading is when you compress your suspension and use the recoil to work with you instead of against you. On suspension forks, this means pushing down before you pop up, kind of like the spring on a pogo stick. You see how the shocks actually help you pop up off the ground? Well, they won't unless you preload. For bikes with rear suspension, you'll need to pull back even further to preload the rear shock before you pop up. So that's pretty much it. I really hope this video gets some more people bunny hopping. It takes a lot of practice to master, but if you have an average mountain bike and you're in reasonably good shape, I think you'll get it eventually. It's totally doable. Thanks for watching and ride safe out there. Alright, so what I'm going to show you guys here is a bunny hop frame by frame so we can really dig into what's going on here. So this is the approach, and this is important because this is when the preload is being done. So now notice, I'm holding on to those bars and I'm bending my arms. And now keep an eye right here. That's where the suspension forks are going to compress. Now I'm going down like I'm going to jump, bending down on those bars and pushing them down. So maybe you can't see my, you can't see the pressure I'm putting on with my arms, but this is not just a kind of smooth thing. I'm really pushing down on the bars when I'm doing this. And look at how those suspension forks are compressing. That is your preload. Now it's going to be a fluid motion right as you finish compressing, you're going to pull up and now, the next step is going to be bring the bars right up to your waist and stand straight up. So I'm pulling those bars straight up to my waist and standing straight up. Now, a lot of people like to say that you're going to angle your toes forwards to bunny hop. I don't really think of it that way. I think of it more like my feet are always going to be level with the ground. When I'm in this position like this, I want you to think of a pogo stick. If you've ever used a pogo stick, you can stand on it and you can hop around. Your feet are not clipped in, your feet are not strapped in, but have you ever questioned why your feet stay on the pogo stick? Of course they do. You're holding on to the bars at the top and you're pushing down. So you're kind of holding the pogo stick to your feet. And that's exactly what we're going to do here with the bunny hop. Because I continue to pull those bars towards my feet, now my feet kind of are angled forwards. Now another point I want to make here is that it's not really the push forwards that's getting you off the ground. It's that initial pop that's going to make the bike airborne. See, watch this. Pull the bike up to your waist and watch the bike start to launch off the ground already. See, it's going up in the air. I haven't even started pushing the bars forwards. It's pulling those bars like a bastard. Go balls out. Pull the bars right up to your waist. You can even see the back tire, you know, compressing down into the ground. And then you start going up. Then you level it out. 
you push your bars forward so that the back wheel is level with the front wheel, and that kind of gets you further off the ground, but that's not actually what's propelling the bike upwards. That initial pop is what's propelling the bike upwards. So let's just watch this. Let's watch this bunny hop. Preload, pull the bike up to your waist, and push forwards. Preload, pull the bike up to your waist, push forwards. Let's go frame by frame once more. There's the preload. Bend your arms, come way down, push down on those bars. You can see the fork is compressed. It's decompressing as I'm pulling the bike up to my waist. And that's what's propelling the bike off the ground, just like a pogo stick. You're standing there. Pulling the bike towards your feet and up. And that's how you bunny hop. Now this file here, this QuickTime file, it's actually got two bunny hops in it. It's got this one in slow motion. It's got this one in slow motion. And if you look down in the description, I have a direct link to download this file. So you can put it on your computer, use your arrow keys, and play it frame by frame and review it yourself. So look down in the video description and you'll be able to get this file. Starts with this bunny hop here. Getting 120 frames a second. Slow motion. And then this bunny hop here. 